you have your Bibles, let's turn to Exodus 19. Exodus 19, we'll begin reading in verse 1. When you get there and we read through it, you're going to notice a few things. Well, maybe you will. I think I've preached from this chapter twice already in the last <clears throat> three to four months. But when I read through it, the first time I was preaching to you, I said, that ain't going to be the last time you hear something out of these scriptures. And then the second time I said, that's not going to be the last time you hear something out of these scriptures. <laughs> This might not be the last time you hear something out of these scriptures for me, uh, but really in studying it, it just kept like, it felt like for months, for a few months there when I would read through these scriptures, preparing for that first sermon the Lord gave me out of it, it just seemed like so many other things stood out to me and the Lord continued to feed my soul with some of it and uh, in time, in the right time, the Lord gives it to me to preach. But in Exodus 19, we'll begin reading in verse 1, we'll read down to about verse 17. <coughs> Appreciate you being here this morning. Uh, it says, In the third month, when the children of Israel were gone forth out of the land of Egypt, the same day came they into the wilderness of Sinai. For they were departed from Rephidim and were come to the desert of Sinai and had pitched in the wilderness, and there Israel camped before the mount. And Moses went up unto God, and the Lord called unto him out of the mountain, saying, Thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel, you have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and how I bare you on eagles' wings, and brought you unto myself. Now therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant, then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people. For all the earth is mine. He said, And you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests, and a holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. When Moses came and called for the elders of the people, and and laid before their faces all the words which the Lord commanded him. And all the people answered together and said, All that the Lord has spoken we will do. And Moses returned the words of the people unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Moses, Lo, I come unto thee in a thick cloud, that the people may hear when I speak with thee, and, I, <clears throat> and believe thee forever. And Moses told the words of the people um, unto the Lord. And the Lord said to Moses, Go unto the people, and sanctify them today and tomorrow and let them wash their clothes and be ready against the third day for the third day the Lord will come down in the sight of all the people upon Mount Sinai. Thou shalt set bounds unto the people round about saying, Take heed to yourselves that you go not up unto the mount or touch the border of it. Whosoever toucheth the mount shall be surely put to death. There shall not a hand touch it but he shall Surely be stoned or shot through, whether it be beast or man, it shall not live. When the trumpet soundeth long, they shall come up to the mount. Verse 14, And Moses went, Moses went down from the mount unto the people and sanctified the people, and they washed their clothes. And he said unto the people, Be ready against the third day, come not against your wives. And it came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were thunders, and lightnings and a thick cloud upon the mount and the voice of the trumpet exceeding loud so that all the people that was in the camp trembled and Moses brought forth the people out of the camp to meet with God and they stood at the nether part of the mount. I want to read on down just a couple more verses because I'm going to touch on this at the end of the sermon. And Mount Sinai I was altogether on a smoke because the Lord descended upon it in a fire and the smoke thereof ascended, ascended as the smoke of a furnace and the whole mount quaked greatly and when the voice of the trumpet sounded long and waxed louder and louder Moses spake and listen to this and God answered him by voice and the Lord came down upon Mount Sinai on the top of the mount and the Lord called unto Moses up to the top of the mount and Moses went up Lord we want to thank you for this time to come together we thank you for the, the songs we've heard the, the prayers we've prayed uh, Lord for the scriptures we've read and Lord, we thank you for the lives that were given and taken that we could have this blessed old book. Today we ask today that you'd give the increase on the reading of it. Help us to get understanding of it. Lord, enlighten our eyes. Help us, Lord. Give us, Lord, what we need to walk in a, in a lost and dying world and be the light that we need to be. Help us, Lord, to win souls to Christ. And help us, Lord, to be the examples we need to be in a lost and dying world. In Jesus' name we pray. And amen. amen. All right. Uh, looking at verse 17, we're, we're going to kind of dissect this chapter a little bit in, throughout the sermon. won't be before you too long. It says in verse 17, Moses brought forth the people out of the camp to meet with God. 
I want to preach on this thought today. Who did we really come to meet today? Who did we really come to meet today? Moses brought the people out to meet with God. Who else better to meet with than God? You reckon they were excited? <laughs> you reckon that the Bible said they trembled. Amen. They were, they were probably amazed, nervous, a little fearful. Wonder what's going to happen. But they came to meet with God. This is right before he gave the Ten Commandments. They come to meet with God. And we could talk about, more about, we could talk more about what happened when they met with God. Like the mountain quaking, the voice of the trumpet, God speaking to them and answering, and God coming down. But if you're going to look at what all happened when they met with God, you're going to have to also look at what happened before they met with God. Amen. Because... What you do before you meet with God has a whole lot to do with what happens when you meet with God. Yeah. Amen. So in verse 18, it says this. I mean, not verse 18, verse 8. I'm sorry, verse 8. It says that, And all the people answered together all that the Lord spoke and said, We will do. Yeah. They agreed. You know what they were saying? We are willing to do whatever it takes. To, to meet with God and God talk to us. We're willing to do whatever it takes. They said we're willing to obey and do whatever it takes to see God come down to where we are and meet with us. In verse 10 it says, And the Lord said to Moses, Go unto the people and sanctify them today and tomorrow and let them wash their clothes. They sanctified themselves. That just simply means they prepared themselves to meet with God. They done what it took and prepared themselves to meet with God. Verse 11, he said, And be ready against the third day. The third day the Lord will come down in the sight of all the people upon Mount, upon Mount Sinai. So what he was saying was, At the time that you know you're going to go meet with God, you need to be ready to meet with God. Don't just show up and say, wonder if God's going to show up today. No, you go and be ready. You prepare yourself and sanctify yourself. Sanctification means separation. You separate yourself. In other words, back then they had to separate themselves from the things of Egypt, the things of the world, and come to meet with God. They had to separate themselves from worldly things that God did not uh, allow them to do. And that's no different than the church today. Yes, it's a little different for the children of Israel back then than it is for us. Some of the things He required and forbid them to do is a little different than the things He requires and forbids us to do. But you know what? We know because what the Bible teaches us, we know what God requires of us and we know what God forbids bids us to do. And we're not ignorant of the, his, of the devil's devices. We know what they are. We know the life we used to live. If God didn't give us any instructions on how to live after we got saved, we would know not, not what to do because of the way we used to live before we met Him. Yeah. There's enough there for us to know not what to do. But I'm not trying to be mean, but I can tell you this. There's a lot of times our services when they get started, as a preacher that stands behind a pulpit and looks at most of the majority as the same crowd every week, I can tell when we came to meet with God and when we didn't. I can tell when we came to meet with God because that's what we're supposed to do and we came to meet with God because that's what we wanted to do. There's a big difference in the services when that happens. We don't read anywhere in these verses, okay? Now get, bear with me for a little while on this. But we don't read anywhere in these verses where Israel said, Moses, we heard what you said and we heard about who we was going to meet today, but... I just ain't feeling it. You know, I don't think I'm going today. Who, wait, who'd you say was going? God, no, nah, I don't think I'm going today. I think I'm going to stay home. Did you ever read in there where it said, you know, I really got too many things to do today. I'd, I'd like to go with y'all. I, mean, I know it's God and everything, but, uh, and there's nobody like him, and we really never met him before, really, like we're fixing to meet him, but, I got too many stuff to do. I got too much stuff to do. I got too many things. I got a question. What did you do the last six days? <laughs> I got a lot of stuff to do too, don't you? <laughs> but but it, you don't read anywhere in there where they said, you know, I ain't feeling too well. <laughs> I've seen some people stay at home and do other stuff that was more strenuous than sitting on a church pew. <laughs> But said, I don't feel like going to church today. I'm not able. He said, we're going to meet with God today. And they all said, we ready. We're going to do whatever it takes to make sure we're there to meet with God. When God comes down and speaks to you, Moses, we want to hear what he's got to say. Moses was the mediator. Listen, I'm nobody. I'm not a Moses. I promise you I'm not. 
But today, in today's church, God put preachers behind the pulpit to, rela- to, to, to give to you what God gave to him so it'll help you. And so it'll help him. And, and, and today, uh, many times we sit at home and we don't go to the house of God. Although we know they're going to meet with God, we don't go meet with God. And, and they knew for a fact that this was God that was going to meet. So they all said, we're ready to go. We're going. I don't read where it said. Now, now had Moses said this, hey, I want y'all to meet my father-in-law today. Let's all get out there and meet him. Some of them probably said, I ain't going out there to meet your father-in-law. <laughs> and some of them would have said, hey, we're going out here to meet a great preacher. Some would have come and some would have said, I got too much stuff. To, I got too many things to do. Got to stay up. Not going to go. But they, you know why you don't read any of that about Israel? You know why you don't read any of those excuses? Because it was God they was going to meet with. Amen. They realized who it was. They said, this is God. Moses said that God's going to come off the mount and He's going to meet with us today and we're going to hear His voice through the thick cloud. We're going to hear what God has to say. Who wants to miss out on that? Nobody. All of them said, we're ready. We're going to prepare ourselves. We're going to get ready. And there's nobody, nobody in this world more important than the one we're going to meet with today. Amen. He took them out to meet with God. Now the question is, who did we come to meet with today? Who did we really come to meet with today? That's right. We come to meet with the same God that they were going to meet with. Well, we're going to take a little test. All of us like test, right? <laughs> me either. I fail most of them. <laughs> Emmy reminds me all the time. But let's see. Let's see how many of us came to meet with God today. All right. How many of y'all had this conversation before you left the house this morning with somebody in your house? Are we going to church today? (laughs) If you had that discussion, do you really think you was coming to meet with God? How many of y'all had this discussion? Are we going to church today? I don't know. Are you going? I don't know. Are you going? I'm not sure. How do you, I'm not sure if I feel like going. If it was God you was going to meet with, do you really think you would have had that kind of discussion this morning? I don't think so. How many of you had to make up your mind this morning that this is where you was going to be when you got up this morning? If you had to make up your mind that you want to go meet God, with God, now some of you may say, well, I don't look at it that way. I don't know why you're here then. If you don't look at it as when you go to church, you're going to meet with God and God's people. We know you come to meet with God's people. But I wouldn't come meet with God's people if God wasn't here. Would you? I wouldn't waste my time coming to see you and I can see you all week long. I come to the house of God because this is the place God hewn out and said, hey, they, the, I'm going to build my church upon a rock and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. He was not talking about just Peter and his disciples. He was talking about, I believe, the living church today. And God was saying, I built my church upon the rock. And when we come to the church, why in the world we gather if we wasn't coming to meet somebody that we just met everywhere and anywhere? If we was, if we was going to meet the same old crowd we met everywhere and anywhere else, we just stay everywhere and anywhere else. Why do we come to church on Wednesday? Why do we come to church on Sunday? Because we're a peculiar treasure, as he called that, and we're a peculiar people. And guess what? Everybody in the world don't go to church because everybody don't know the same God you know. So, how many of us had that discussion about whether we wanted to go to church? How many of us had that discussion of how uh, did we feel like going to church? How many of us had that discussion at all about whether we, was going, uh, we had to struggle to make up our mind? Was we going to meet with God today or was we going to just stay home? Now, some of you may say, well, you're preaching to the choir because we're here. You need to preach to those that ain't here. Well, maybe this will help you next week when you have this same discussion that you had this morning. <laughs> Maybe this will help you next week whenever somebody says, are we going to your church? You cut them off and say, yes, we're going to church today. Why? Because that's where I want to go and that's where we need to go and that's where we're going to go meet with God and God's people. Hey, if you don't think the songs that they sung was about God, why are you listening? If you don't think that their songs are about God, why do we even have singing? We come, you know what? Everything we do from the time we step in that door is about Him. We open up in prayer. We talk to Him. 
We do congregational singing so we can sing hymns and psalms and spiritual songs, make it melody in our heart to God. And then we sing songs and we pray at the altar again. And then we open this blessed old book that is Him. And then we preach Him. And we talk about Him. And then we have an altar call to see who wants to come talk to Him personally on a level at the altar and, and, do, and do business with God. We do everything we do because it's about Him. And if you don't think it's about Him, why in the world are you here? Who did we really come to meet today? How many of us had that discussion? Now, I'm not saying you're dead wrong because you had that discussion. <laughs> we have a lot of discussions sometimes before we come to church that hinders me before I get here. Don't you? I'll just leave that alone. <laughs> not too often do we, though. But there's times it happens because if you have a family then you always have some kind of this or that that's going to make you late or this, this or that that's going to happen. And you go, whoo, can't we just get to church? Why? Because you know it's a place of refuge. And once you get here, everything that happened back there, you can kind of lay it behind you and you can enjoy the goodness of God. Amen. That's why we come to meet with God today. But I asked the question, who did we really come to meet today? How many of us had those discussions? How many of us wondered whether it was even going to come today? We had to talk about it. We had to make a decision all this when there really shouldn't have been no discussion. It shouldn't have been a hard decision. It should have been in your mind made up when you went to sleep last night that you was going to get up and go to church this morning. Unless you was providentially hindered, as some of them say. Unless there was something so bad that God knows your heart and you could not make it no matter what. But guess what? That didn't even happen because you're here. So, but we're going to take it a step further now. Some of you are saying, well, you don't went too far already. <laughs> but, but we're going to take it a step further. Who did we really come to meet today? What if somebody told some of y'all this week, earlier in the week, that we're going to church this week and when we get there, Luke Bryan is going to be at church to fellowship and mingle with people. <laughs> Luke Bryan. Some of y'all going, who's Luke Bryan? <laughs> I wish I was saying, who's Luke Bryan? But some, uh, what if we said, what if we said, oh, Luke Bryan's going to be at church this week and he's going to meet and greet and fellowship with everybody. How many of y'all would have had that same discussion that you had this morning about whether he's going to church or not? Uh, there would been no discussion. Some of the men have been turning around going, where'd she go? <laughs> but that, 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 that truth though, if, we, if it was Luke Bryan, what if it, what if it was Miss America? That we knew Miss America was going to be here to speak. She wasn't going to preach. She was going to give her testimony. Some of the women would look around and go, where'd he go? <laughs> what if it was the president? What if it was uh, Dabo Swinney? What if it was somebody that we liked, somebody we looked up to, and somebody that we, you know, Dwayne Johnson. What if it was him? What if it was some of these people, Peyton Manning, that we look up to, some of these females that we look up to, and we knew they was going to be here, and they was going to meet and greet with everybody. You know what we would do? We would make sure we was here. I got a question. Would you rather meet those people I just mentioned or meet the one that created them? Are we worshiping the creature more than we are the creator? You know what we would do? We would jump through hoops to make sure we was here on time. On time. We would make sure that we was here. We would make sure. We would call around and find every babysitter in the world if we had to to make sure. If we had to have a babysitter, we'd take a day off work if we knew we had to in order to get here because we want to meet that person that we like and look up to so much. But yeah, we make excuses while to stay at home on a Sunday and whenever we know that we're supposed to be going to meet with God. Yeah. The God of all. There's nobody in this world more important than the God of heaven and earth. He's better and greater than any NASCAR driver, any sports person, any movie star. There's none greater than Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And who did we really come to meet with today? Why in the world did we have to have a discussion of why we should go to church or should we go to church? Now, for some of y'all who, some of y'all folks stayed at home, you can go home and preach this to them because you came. <laughs> Don't you say the preacher said. You stand up and be a, be a man. <laughs> but really, wouldn't we have went through all kind of trouble if that's what it took in order for us to be here? If we knew somebody famous was going to be here? Who's more famous than God? That's right. The one that died on a cross 
gave His life for us so that we could have a good life here, a good life here, and eternal life in heaven. And yet we'll find every excuse in the world why we don't want to go to church and we'll discuss why we don't want to go. Moses said, hey, we're going to meet with God. I believe a lot of them would have stayed home if it had been his father-in-law, to be honest with you. But it wasn't his father-in-law. It was God that was going to meet. Now in closing, and I'm sure you're glad of that, but it's going to take a few minutes. I want to look at the results of what happened when they prepared themselves and they went to meet with God. In verse 18 it says, And Mount Sinai was altogether on a smoke, because the Lord descended upon it in a fire. Now most of the time we would be going, smoke, really? But the Bible says that the Lord descended in a fire. And that's why the smoke was there. So that's a good thing. Amen? I bet none of them choked on it. Then it says this, And the smoke thereof ascended as the smoke of a furnace, and the whole mount quaked greatly. What else has ever made that happen? It was God's presence. And then it said, And when the voice of the trumpet sounded long, and waxed louder and louder, Moses spake, and God answered him by voice. They could hear what he said. They could hear what he said. And then it goes on to say this. I like this part. And the Lord came down upon Mount Sinai. The Lord came down. And you know what that means? They experienced real evidence of God's presence when they came to meet with God. They experienced God. They heard His voice. They heard Him speak to them. You say, well, I ain't never heard that. No, but I've heard that still small voice that spoke to me many times. I've heard Him and felt His presence in church like no other place. Now, some of you may be sitting there and you're, you're trying to discredit everything I'm saying. You're saying, well, I ain't got to come to church to meet with God. You really don't have to. You can meet with Him anywhere. But what better place when He says where two or three are gathered? If you think you can meet with him at the house. How much more can you meet with him when you get a whole crowd of people getting together who want to meet with him like they did? And guess what happened? God came down. And I believe there's been many services I've been in throughout my time where I couldn't physically see him, but I knew he was here and I knew God came down where we were. So many times we leave church services though wondering why the service was not exactly like we thought it should be. We didn't get much out of it. We thought the preacher didn't study. We thought this was wrong. We thought it was a little dry. I can tell you this, when you left feeling that way, I promise you it was not anything to do with God. That's right. That's right. God didn't change. Amen. Amen. God, did, God didn't just say, I'm not going to go today because I don't feel like it. I'm going to tell you what. It, could it be that you came to see if God would show up, but you wasn't prepared to meet Him when He did? Yeah. Yeah. You came to see if He'd show up, but you was not prepared to meet Him when He did show up. Good. And you know what happened? Some of them was, and you looked at them and say, I don't feel what they're feeling. Yeah. You know why? Because they was prepared when they came. Yeah. Yeah. If you're waiting to prepare yourself to meet with God, if you're going to wait till you get here to do it, you're probably a little too late. What they done, when you read your Bible back where we went over it, if you look and see those three things that we called out, if you look and see, they done that before they came to meet with God. And you know what they done? You know how? Three days before. They didn't wait till the last minute. They didn't get up on Sunday morning and say, I got to find a verse to read before I go to church because I got to feel spiritual. I ain't read my Bible all week. Oh, I'll just, I know what John 3.16 says. That's good. No, you know what? Three days before, they started preparing themselves for something three days later. If we prepared ourselves three days before we ever got here, <laughs> when God showed up, we would know it was Him. When God manifested Himself, we wouldn't be looking around to see who else felt it. We would be the ones feeling it with somebody looking at us. Who did we really come to meet. If we came to meet with God, you can meet with Him because He said He would meet with us. Amen. But if you ain't prepared, you ain't even going to know He's here. And you're going to wonder who He is <laughs> and who ain't. But I really believe this and I'm done. One of the biggest reasons that our churches all over the world today, ours included, struggle at times to see a movement of God in our life and in our churches is because we're not preparing ourselves to meet with God when He does show up. And when He does manifest Himself. Now I say that word, those words show up. We know that God lives on the inside of us. Right? We know that. But it's just like in, in, in the carnal man. And you know this. If you feed the carnal man, it shows you've been feeding the carnal man. 
When you starve the carnal man, it shows. Why? Because you either lose weight or gain weight. Mm -hmm. And when you feed the spiritual man, it shows up when you get to church. When you starve the spiritual man, guess what shows up when you get to church? It manifests itself. And so what I'm trying to tell you is, when you feed the spiritual man, he's going to be here when you get here. But if you've been starving him, you ain't even going to know he's here. And you need to know that God is real and God's here. And God wants to meet with His people. Why in the world would He die on the cross and say, this is what I, I'm a, Peter said, you are the son of the living God. And he said, upon this rock I'll build my church. Why build it if you wasn't going to be in it? God built it because that's where He wanted to meet with you. God built it because He wanted you to be a part of it. Not a bystander, not somebody on the sideline. He wanted you in the game. He wanted you involved. He wanted you to be a part of it. And He wanted you to know that He was there. Amen? And there's been many times I've come to church and I left and I said, that was Him. <laughs> that was Him. That was all Him. And then there's other times I left and I said, you know what? I wasn't prepared for that. I wasn't prepared for that. And even if nobody else noticed it, guess who did? I did. My question is, who did you really come to meet today? And who are you going to come to meet next time you come? Because if you kept, felt like I was preaching you this morning and you have, you, you have not prepared yourself to come meet with God, today when you came to church, you really was not prepared to meet with God. I hope that what I've said today and what God said to you through His Word, I hope makes a difference the next time you come. And you are prepared to meet with God when He comes. Amen. That's all stand.